enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, the Lord has enabled us to gather in His presence to worship Him and glorify His holy name through our singing. And today, we observe the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Loving God, Thank you for this blessed morning. Lord, we humbly ask you to sanctify us and help us to glorify your holy name through this divine service, O oh Lord. Help us to realize your presence in our midst as we glorify your holy name through our singing, through our prayers, through our meditation. May your name be glorified through this divine service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us glorify the Lord by singing the opening hymn.
Dearly beloved, let us offer the calling for this day. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in your hearts, in our hearts, the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of all thy great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us continue our prayer. O Lord, God Almighty, infinite in power, in goodness and in mercy, help us now to worship you with reverence and humility. Before you, the angels veil their faces. May we therefore approach you with a deep sense of your awesome majesty and of your spotless purity and holiness. And may we so address you that you may hear our prayers and pour down your blessing upon us. We ask you, O Lord, to grant us this day your Holy Spirit, that we may be strengthened to fulfill our several duties and to resist the temptations that may come upon us. We call upon you in the name of Jesus Christ, through whom you give strength to the weak and supply all the spiritual wants of the soul. Have compassion upon us for our Savior's sake and give us grace to do whatever you require of us. O oh, cleanse us for his sake, for the stain of every sin, from pride and envy, from malice, selfishness, and uncharitableness. Make us meek, lowly, gentle, kind, and forgiving. Let us not live to please ourselves, or indulge any evil inclinations of our own hearts, but let us aim to glorify you, our God, to do good in our generation, all through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, let us hear the epistle portion for this day. The epistle for the seventh Sunday after Trinity is found in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, reading from verse 19. Romans, chapter 6, reading from verse 19. I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. But as you have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so, now yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness, for which we were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had he then in those things? Whereof we are now ashamed. For the end of those things is death. And now being made free from sin and become servants of God, you have become your fruit unto holiness. And the end is the lasting. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the reading of the epistle. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark chapter 8 verses beginning from 1 to 10. In those days when again a great crowd had gathered and they had nothing to eat. He called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me 
now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. And they had few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away. And immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanuda. Here ends the gospel portion. Praise be unto you, O Christ. Let us once again glorify the Lord by singing another beautiful hymn. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Dearly beloved, once again I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today I would like to share a few thoughts from the gospel portion that was read to us today. Before that, I would like to assure you that the Lord who worked wonderful miracles when he lived on this earth, continues to do the same even today. I happened to read a testimony by Reverend Dr. Victor Pierce. He has written a book on miracles and angels. 
In that he said, how wonderfully Lord led him to buy a piece of land in a prime area. Once, as he was looking for a place to build a church, he was inspired to cross over the road. And he looked ahead and saw there was no empty space. And he said, Lord, I am looking for an empty space. But there is no empty space here. But again he was inspired, go across. So he went across the road and he saw a very old garage. And he went into it and saw a lady sitting at the as a reception, receptionist. And she, he went and asked uh, her, Madam, <clears throat> I am urged to come here and ask for an empty place. Do you, know, do you know any empty place here? And she said, yes, you have come to the right place. <clears throat> Only yesterday, my boss told me that he gave a piece of land to the municipality and he donated it. But even though after two years, they haven't done anything with that. So you can ask the boss to get it back and give it to you. She fixed an appointment with him. So on the day of appointment, Reverend Dr. Victor Pierce met the owner of the garage and talked to him. <clears throat> and he said, um, it's very difficult to get the land back. Anyway, I will try. I will write to them. So he wrote a letter to the municipality and they replied saying that they cannot give back the land. If at all they want, they have to sell it. <clears throat> so the boss called Reverend Dr. Victor and said, see, this is what I have received from the municipality. And anyway, I'll go and talk to him. So the next day he went and talked to the officials of the municipality and came back. <clears throat> and he called Dr. Victor Pierce and said, I have a good news for you. I have made them to give back the land to me because they haven't done it for done anything for two years. And they said it's very difficult. Then finally they said, if at all we have to give back, it should be in the form of uh, sale because they cannot give anything free because the land has been entered in the records. Then... I asked them how much and they said at least one pound. Then I said agreed and I came back. Now if you want the land, just pay one pound and get the land. And Reverend Dr. Victor Pierce was amazed because that piece of land was four acre land. And even that was in a prime area. And he really praised God. Along with the congregation, he glorified the Lord to get a four-acre land just for one pound. Now, today, that church is called Bucknell Church. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God continues to work in a wonderful way in our lives too. Now, today's gospel portion talks about how God intervened in the lives of the people. Especially when they were in need, he met the need in a wonderful way. Now, as I was reflecting on this passage, three thoughts came to my mind. One, our God is a God of compassion. Number two, our God is is a God of cooperation. Number three, our God is a God of conservation. 
Now, let me share in what way we see our God is a compassionate God in this gospel. Now, look at verse 2 and 3. There are many phrases that clearly tell us that our Lord Jesus Christ is a compassionate God. Many a time, people think our God lives far high above, nothing to do with our lives. There is a philosophy called deism. It says God is an impersonal God. He is more like a watchmaker. And he made this world and made it to function. Now it's going on, on its own. And God doesn't interfere in the life of people. Now we have to live. We have to manage this world. So, look, uh, I, I, I always thought of uh, this imagery. You know, in the olden days, we had wrist watches. And there will be a key. You have to key it every one or one, or one and a half days so that it will make, to make it run. And then came an automatic watch. It will wound on its own. So you don't have to give the key. <clears throat> now in the same way, they think God has made this world and you have to manage on your own. But in the scripture, we see a God is a personal God. He's more like our parents who love the children, like father and mother. God shares that kind of love with each and every one of us. Now, I want you to look at verse 2 and 3. It says, I have compassion on the crowd. Now, how do we know that God had compassion? He continues to say, because they have been with me for three days, and have nothing to eat. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus knew about the hunger. He knew about the needs. Then he continues to say, If I send them away hungry to the home, they will faint. So Jesus knew what would happen if they continue to remain in that need. Then, in verse 3 we read, Some of them have come from far away. So we know how Jesus understood the details. Even though the disciples saw the same people, they had different observations. But when Jesus looked at the people, he observed many things. It's uh, more like uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes' uh, story. Even though Sherlock Holmes and uh, uh, Dr. Watson will see the same things, Sherlock Holmes will observe many things. Many things. He can read in between the lines. He can draw out the implications of the many things that he saw. But others would miss them. In the same way, we see Jesus Christ looking at the people, understood them, and shared their pain and suffering. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our God is a compassionate God. Don't think God is not concerned about the situation we are placed in, in these days. Many people suffer and die. Don't think our God is just keeping dumb. No. He is involved very much in this world, in our personal lives. Our God is a compassionate God. Secondly, our God is a God of cooperation. <clears throat> Even though Jesus did the miracle, he didn't do it out of the air. He wanted their share, their involvement in the miracle. That's why he asked them, asked them in verse 5, how many loaves do you have? In other words, 
the lord wants us to get involved he wants our cooperation when he wanted to do something he wants us to get involved i think of a, an imaginative story once there came a flood <clears throat> and the water came inside the houses and in one particular place there was a person <clears throat> when the water came up to the ankle level a bus came on the road and when they saw him standing at the door they asked them asked him to get into the boat uh, uh, sorry in the bus bus first but he said no 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 uh, i am a strong believer i have prayed to jesus and he would rescue me now you carry on you rescue other people <coughs> unbelievers so the bus went off and when the water came up to the hip level he continued to pray then came a boat and the people asked him to get into the boat but he said no 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 i am a believer i pray to god and god will rescue me you carry on then the water started rising he went to the rooftop and continued to pray then a helicopter came and they dropped a rope ladder and asked them to ask him to climb but he said no 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 i pray to god and jesus will save me so the helicopter went finally he stayed there for many days and died <clears throat> it's just an ima- imaginative story don't worry then he went to heaven and asked jesus lord i have prayed earnestly to you you didn't rescue me what do you mean i didn't rescue you i sent a bus a boat and a helicopter what happened to them dear brothers and sisters in christ when the lord wants to help us he wants us to cooperate when we messed up many things in order to solve our problems the lord is ready to help us but he wants us to cooperate even when in our personal lives even in our political life the lord wants us to cooperate with him when we do things on our own we get into a problem thirdly we see our god is a god of conservation now even though 4000 people have been fed there were many leftovers and jesus didn't want to waste them he wanted his disciples to collect the leftovers probably to give it to other people or give it to animals or some other things but whatever it is jesus didn't like wasting things in other words the lord who wants us to consume things in this world also wants us to conserve things that applies to our environmental problem that we face in this world see there are many bad things that has happened around us in this period of pandemic but at the same time there are certain good things okay for example now they say that the nature is renewing itself now particularly staying in the campus of st matthias church i hear many birds not only just crows cuckoos honey birds parrots there are so many birds miners they are all around us making noise all through the day in other words what i'm trying to say is that there is a purpose when god allowed this pandemic come over this world dear brothers and sisters in christ don't underestimate the will of god or the decision of god or god allowing certain things in our lives in this world 
our god is a god of compassion our god is a god of cooperation our god is a god of conservation let us think about it and act accordingly let's pray loving god we once again come to you and thank you for enabling us to gather here in our homes and have a wonderful fellowship along with the people in our congregation who are watching this worship service and praying to you lord unite our hearts strengthen our faith help us to grow in spirituality help us to glorify your holy name through our personal lives oh lord we place our families and our loved ones into thy loving hands oh lord we humbly ask you to take care of those who are sick oh lord those who are quarantined let thy presence be with them and uphold them we also pray for the families who have lost the loved ones and the families in which the members of the uh, family are in the hospitals lord we humbly ask you to take care of the sick and the dying there are many people who work in public places we pray for the police personnel the uh, people who are working in corporation and we also pray for the doctors nurses and other people oh lord we humbly ask you to be with them and uphold them particularly at this time we pray for the senior citizens in our congregation let thy presence be with them and uphold them lord we commit into your land, in your loving hands all those who are participating in this worship continue to be with us and help us to glorify your holy name by leading a witness for life in jesus name we pray amen let us say the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy'll be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and always amen till you believe it before we close with a closing hymn i would like to read out the names of those who are celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week july 26th ruth sneha kamaraj 27th eslin favel 28th sharon bothwick david witaker on 29th tennison bucklan on 30th vinayagam kamaraj sasikala salomon and on the same day vengamla and ricky claudius are celebrating their wedding anniversary on 31st josephine shatlier royston gerald claudius othniel francis and on the 1st of august felix aaron on behalf of st matthias church i congratulate them and wish them all god's blessing let's pray loving god we place all those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week continue to be with them and bless them and uphold them bless the families too enable them to celebrate many more happy birthdays and wedding anniversaries you know their needs we humbly ask you to fulfill the needs and bless the future plans in jesus name we pray amen thank you for joining us in this worship service uh, continue to send your offerings to our church and we need uh, the details if you send the offering through online 
please send the details to our treasurer, Mr. Prabhakar. His number is 9841686620. Let us close with a closing hymn. Glad he has made me glad. I will rejoice for you.